Hi, my name is Sam Aaron and I've written a software system called Sonic Pi, which I'm using right now to make the code. Uh, to write the code, in fact, you can hear I'm making code and making music. In fact, you'll see they're both the same thing very soon, very short. And it's a software system I've developed to help myself make music. scared, worried, or concerned, or just not even care about what the code is. And so I'm here to show you what I think it is, and how I see it. And it's probably very different than the other thing you might have seen before me in many ways, because every time I go and speak to people about programming in general, people think it's something that's just for business. And it is really useful for business. Businesses make a lot of improvements in the way they work through music and taking advantage of the power of code. But just like the written language, English, in our case, isn't just something that businesses use, we all use it. Code is the same too. We need to find ways to help us understand that and to start to help us to use code to express ourselves in new ways. And so Sonic Pi, the system I'm showing you right now, is a tool that I've created to help that sort of that conversation happen a bit more. And hopefully get you at home uh, programming some basic code and not just doing it because it's important that people tell you you need to develop the code, but doing it because it's just huge fun. And maybe some of you will become the next DJs and performers of tomorrow and I'm really looking forward to seeing some of you perform uh, in crazy venues. So let me just get started. So uh, I'm showing you uh, this basic system here, but it's actually, uh, let me just stop this code right now. So I'm running it here on a PC in front of you. I've got a this crazy keyboard here, but it's just it's just for me just just to, to feel fun and it's a bit more relaxing to stand like this than it is to stand like that over a keyboard when I'm performing. Uh, but you can do everything I'm showing you now with a regular computer and regular PC or a regular Mac. Or if you don't have either of those two things, uh, you can go and buy a Raspberry Pi computer, which are pretty cheap, and plug it into your TV and do everything that I'm showing you with that too. Um, so let me just quickly show you the website. So I'm just gonna. Uh, flip across to this view here. So this is the website that you can download this software from. It's entirely free. It's what's called open source. Uh, and that's a really important concept. It's a bit like if I were to make a really amazing cake, but I would keep the recipe for that cake to myself. That's something that only I would benefit from. Only I would be able to make those cakes. But if I shared that recipe, if I published the recipe in a book, that's opening the source to the cake. And in this case, software is exactly the same. Many pieces of software, um, especially ones made by corporations and companies, their source code is kept secret. Whereas in this case with Sonic Pi, the software we're looking at today, the source code is completely open. So it means it's something if you're interested in learning how the software was built, you can go and read those basic instructions of how the software operates and works. And it also means that lots of people can collaborate and contribute, and it's a really wonderful and positive thing. But it also means that the software itself is, is something that will last uh, beyond the initial developers uh, and be something that in the future people can be able to look at and uh, explore. And so, as I say before, um, you can download this for Windows. Just click on Windows. Shoop, it goes all the way down to the Windows. And you can choose between a normal installer or a portable app if you don't have the ability to install things on your PC. Uh, the Raspberry Pi is covered here, so you can just, it's already installed by default. And for Mac, um, we just need to click on this button and download the app and then just install. It's like a normal, normal application, nothing crazy, just like Word or uh, Explorer or Safari, all those kind of things. Um, and I'll show you what happens when it's started, but it's important just to flick through this whilst we're here. There's loads of examples to get started. We won't look at those because we'll, we'll explore them right now. Um, there's a book you can read, which is free to download. There's some t more talks if you want to watch. Um, there's if you're a teacher or you're homeschooling, then here is some resources for you to get started, some exercises, some interesting places to, to uh, things to do to just to get to, to explore uh, uh, programming as, a, as something to teach. Um, using music particularly, uh, a few more articles here. And finally, um, we also have a really nice and open friendly community. Uh, and this is a nice uh, online space where people are sharing their ideas and thoughts about coding music. And this place uh, doesn't just have weird programmers like me, um, it also has artists and teachers and just people who are generally interested in exploring the combination 
of Coda Music. So I would really encourage you uh, to, to join this community, to ask questions. There's no right or wrong questions. We're all learning and we're all exploring and discovering what's possible. But it's all a very, very new and exciting place to be. Right, so once you've downloaded it, oh, also there, there's some videos here you can watch of people doing performances. Now, actually, at the end of this session, I'll do a, a short performance for you so you can see what the kind of things I do. Uh, it's really important, actually, to say that uh, you can see a range of styles of, of these four videos here. And the music I make is the, is the music that I like making personally. But if you don't like any of these styles of these videos or you don't like the music that I'm making, that's totally fine. Sonic Pi was designed to allow you to make the music that you like. And so I'll, I'll show you how to get started with that in, in general. But r bear in mind that Sonic Pi is a tool for you, for your expression. And so it's really important you, you, you recognise that you can actually turn it into the tool that makes the music that you like to hear. Okay, so once you've downloaded it, uh, you get an app that looks like this. Um, on the top right, oh, I'll show my Windows options there. Um, there are some preferences. I can click on uh, the editor, and I think by default it starts with a big light mode like this. So this is this is probably how you'll see it when you install it. And if you go to the preferences, you can you can choose between the light and the dark modes, uh, just to, to see what you suit. So typically, if I'm in a classroom, I might use the light mode, and if I'm in a nightclub performing with it, I'll use the dark mode. Um, also, if you ha are uh, have uh, um, if you have any accessibility requirements, specifically uh, if you have low vision, then we also have a high contrast mode as well to help uh, uh, make it much more clearer um, uh, what's happening on the screen. And this is also useful uh, if you're working in a classroom and your projector isn't, uh, uh, isn't as new as it could be, uh, and that this will also help to make sure that the, the code and things are clearer uh, to your participants and your audience. So let's click on the light, light mode here. And here you can see the code I was using to make the music you're hearing right at the beginning. But let me just delete all this, because when you start with Sonic Pi, you start with just a, a plain editor, like Microsoft Word. Uh, and in that, you write words, you write sentences and symbols. And the computer will do its best to understand what those sentences mean. And so let's try and ask it to understand this gobbledygook. And it says, oh, no. I have no idea what the gobbledygook means. And so you can see at the bottom of the screen is a big pink uh, warning label that's saying that I don't understand something, something called thread death. And we can see that actually in, in Sonic Pi there's these things called threads. They're, they're, they're like little uh, imaginary band members that sort of are magic up. And then if there's something goes wrong, they just disappear. Uh, and so in this case, our magical band member appeared, tried to understand this code and didn't understand it. And so threw a warning and then disappeared. And so this is normal. So it's important to understand that when you're programming uh, anything, not just music, but any system, having errors like this is a completely normal thing. And it doesn't mean anything other than something was mistyped or something was misunderstood. And it's not that uh, if you're an experienced program, you never get errors. You always get errors, regardless of your experience. So it's important to recognize that, that having an error is, is completely fine. And so... If that gobbledygook doesn't mean anything, what does mean something? So in Sonic Pi, one of the simplest commands that you can use is the play command. And that asks you to play a note. And we, you specify a note with a number. So in this case, we're playing note 70. Let's make it slightly larger. And so if I run this code, you can hear a beep. I'm using a shortcut to generate this sound to, to tr trigger the code. But I could equally use the mouse and uh, click on the run button in the top left. And that will be uh, just exactly the same way. I'm going to use my finger and tap it on the, on the screen. Um, and we can then play our sounds that way as well. So that's great. What happens if I use a different number? What happens if I use uh, 76? We get a higher note. And a lower number will produce a lower note. And so we have access now to all the notes we can hear. So a fun game to play is to try and see how low the sounds you can make that you can still hear, and also how high the sounds you can still hear. And you'll probably find in your family, different age groups will be able to hear different uh, notes at different heights, because as we get older, uh, our hearing tends to uh, not be able to hear uh, high pitches and high tones as well as it used to be able to. Um, so, once we've got the ability to make a sound like this, 
Maybe we might want to play a melody, so two notes, one after each other. So let's play note 70 and then note 75. Now, when you're learning Sonic Pi, uh, and any coding system in general really, an important thing to do is not just to just run stuff and see what happens. The important thing is to step back and have a think. And so it's no different here. So before I press the run button, I'm going to think about how is this going to sound? And imagine it's in my head. So if you can just try to do that at home now. And then when I run the run button, it's probably not what you expected. You probably expected note 70 and then note 75, but you heard them at the same time. And so there's always a case of Sonic Pi, it's always going to surprise you, it's always going to do something you didn't expect whilst you're learning. And so try, try to write the code, try to think about how it might sound, and then listen to it, and then try to reason about what's happening. In this case, what we're hearing is the fact that the computer is incredibly quick. So it's playing note 70, and then note 75, so quickly after another, you can't hear that difference. So you, you might recognise that computers actually in general aren't very clever, they're very basic things but what they are is incredibly fast. So if you can get them to do use those basic skills to do something, they can do it really quickly and a lot of times and very accurately. And that's what's happening here. So we now have the ability to play notes and chords. So chords are multiple notes at the same time. So if you want to actually make a melody, we need one more command and that's called sleep. So we're now gonna play note 70, sleep for a second, so that's just pause, and then play note 75. So run this code. Hopefully you can hear now, we have a separation of those two notes. If I choose to, chose a longer time, like two seconds, you can hear that bigger gap. If I chose a smaller time, like 0.3 seconds, you can hear a much smaller gap. So you can choose whichever note you want to play and whatever time you want to wait between the notes. And at this point, you can make any melody you've ever heard and ever will hear with the, just these two commands. So that's, this is already a great starting point uh, for you to play with. So you feel free to pause the video at this point, download Sonic Pi and just play with play and sleep and see what you can do. Uh, my niece, when she was six, uh, and I showed her these basic two commands, she coded for an hour straight and had written about a hundred lines of code. And it sounded fab and I said to her, that's amazing. She said to me, it's not finished yet. And she carried on writing. So. Yeah, this is already a lot of fun to play with, just the two commands, so I recommend that. But I'm going to quickly whiz through a couple of more things just to show you what's possible, um, and then I'm going to give you a performance to show you what, what, what you can do if you practice, because I think it's really important to understand that Sonic Pi isn't just a tool for learning computer science and learning code, it's also a tool for professional musicians. And so... What, I would, what I'm looking for and hoping to find, I'm seeing all over the world, is people using Sonic Pi to do amazing artistic expressions who can then become uh, people that you can look up to and recognize of what's possible. And then uh, it's then only the, the difference between you where you are now with your Sonic Pi skills and the artist you're observing and seeing and, and, and enjoying is just practice and dedication and just focus. Um, and then you can, you can be the same too. So let's just quickly throw, throw a few more things. One more thing to look at is the fact that all the notes last for the same amount of time. So I can actually use this release option. So options are comma, the name of the option, and a colon. And this is the way that, that many programming languages work is they have this thing called syntax. It's no different from grammar. Um, but the only difference between syntax and grammar in, in a normal language is that if you were to write a sentence and not put the full stop at the end or forget to capitalize the first letter, then the person reading it would just see that it's a mistake but still be able to read it. Whereas the computer, if I don't put this comma here, will complain and say, I don't understand what you're doing. So it's really important to just to get this syntax right. It's, it's annoying to start off with, but you'll get used to it. And then now I can play my code. So that's the same as, as having it before. So I've just added extra words for no value. Where the value happens is if I change this to a different value than one, which is the default. So you can hear now that a short note or a longer note. I can even use this attack command here and that will fade the note in over one second. And then fade the note out over two seconds. So we can experiment and play with different values and we can try the ones that I haven't shown you now. There's a tutorial, so if you click on the help button here, you can actually see 
uh, a full tutorial showing all these things. I'm showing you right now uh, what's happening with the envelopes. And uh, the envelopes, you can look at these graphs, that fade in and fade out. So if this doesn't mean anything to you, don't worry, just experiment and play. But if you want to get delve into it a little bit deeper, there's a full tutorial built into the system which will teach you everything. It's essentially a full book. Uh, and it's also translated to many languages as well. So, once we've got that, we can change the, the duration of the note, fading it in, fading it out. Um, but we could also, let's, let's go for eight, a long note, change the sound of the sound. So let's use synth. So this is a way to specify what the sound is. So far, we've just listened to the basic beep. So if I listen to the sound profit, and I'm going to choose a lower number for this. Let's go for 30. You hear now that sort of a big buzzy sound in the background. And um, so there's lots of many sounds. And the fun thing about this sound is playing with the cutoff value. Let's change it to 70. You hear that? And if I go to 90. So by changing some simple numbers, we're able to really dramatically change the qualities of the sound. And there's lots of these uh, 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 controls and, and, and words to learn and play with. And don't worry if you don't know them. As you your Sonic Pi knowledge grows, your abilities will grow with it too. And so it's, it's designed so that you don't need to know everything to get started. But the more you learn, the more you'll be able to do. So if that doesn't mean anything to you, you can just go back to playing just note 30. And that's a low note there, as you probably can't hear that. So let's hear, if you have like a really big subwoofer in your uh, in your house and a really big bass system for a cinema experience, maybe you'll be able to hear that. Actually, this code here, uh, the most fun to play this code is in a cinema. I remember playing, uh, writing this exact code in a cinema in the Netherlands and it just the whole bass of the whole thing just explode, exploded out, it was brilliant. So yeah, just go back to note 70. We're back to something simple again. So you don't need to know all these things. It's just there for you if you if you want to. Um, now, one last thing I'm going to show you uh, is, well, actually, I'm going to show you two more things, but that's okay. The first, next thing I'm going to show you is the ability to play pre-recorded sounds. So, so far, we're playing the built-in synthesizers. And there's a whole bunch of them to explore and play with, and they've all got different options. And each of them is kind of like an analog synthesizer you might buy in a shop, but in this case, it's a line of code. Another way of making music is to take sounds that have been recorded. So sounds of drums being played, the sound of the winds, the sound of trains going by, the sound of people singing. Anything you can record, you can play back in Sonic Pi. And so I really recommend that you do this. You go and make your own sounds or you download sample packs from the internet of the styles of music that you like and use those to mix in and create your own music. Um, but to get started, before you, you go off and download all those things and make your own recordings, there's a whole bunch of samples built into Sonic Pi, which are all free to use. Um, and so, for example, here's an ambi choir sound. That's the sound of some choir people. Now, what's fun with this is we can start to change things. I can change the rate. I can play this at half speed or at quarter speed. And again, you can see here the effect of that change uh, with one control. I'm now modifying that sound to make it sound more like lots of uh, low-voiced people singing at the same time. Um, I can also change to a loop of a drum sample. So here's a really famous drum break. And that sample there is, uh, was used to, 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 for multiple generations of genres of music. Uh, in the 80s, it was used for hip-hop by Dr. Dre. And he played this at half speed and rapped on top, and it sounded like this. And later on, back in London, we had a whole genre of dance music which used the same kind of sample but sped up faster. So instead of playing it at rate one, I'm going to rate, play it at rate one and a half, which is faster than normal. Let's hear that. There we go. So you probably recognise that sound. So you can do this with any of the any of the sounds. What's also fun to do is to use this onset option. An onset allows you to, uh, rather than playing the whole drum sample, it's just to play the first drum or the second drum, or the third drum. So if I start at zero, and we typically count from zero in programming, a bit like in King's Cross with this uh, platform zero, I can play the first drum, or the second drum, or the third drum, or the fourth drum. And you can see sometimes it doesn't quite get the drums right. If you've got two drums 
one after another it's it's sort of placed at the same time it's it's it, it, you can't automatically pick up all the drums if, if the drum is playing them very quickly but it does its best to, to guess this now what you can do here which is really a lot of fun and i really recommend this is something to play with at home is to create a loop now in sonic pi loops are called live loops and we'll see why they're called live loops in a moment but uh, and, and that's a lot of that to do with the fact that sonic pi is about live performance and now in sonic pi live loops need to have a name so let's call this one drums and live loops need uh, three things they need the name drums they need the start which is a do and they need an end which is an end to say where the live loop starts and ends so this is the bit we're going to repeat round and round and round and so we also need one more thing which is to tell uh, inside the loop how long to wait before we repeat again in this case we're going to wait for a eighth of a second and so what we're going to do here is we've got our live loop called drums which is going to play the fourth because we're using on set three drum in the loop arm end break uh, every uh, eight times a second. There we go. And once we've got this running, which is quite nice, we can then go and change this number to another number, press the run button, and it will automatically switch the drums around. So we can play, or we can actually randomize it. So this is a lot of fun. And once that's still playing, we can go and change the sample. So if you don't want to do drums, I want to do something with guitars. Let's go for this one. We can switch across uh, to a completely different sample all whilst it's playing. And then one final thing to know is that these live loops, they can you can have multiple live loops playing at the same time. So I'm going to create another live loop called uh, bass drum, and I'm going to play a sample. BD house, which is a kick drum sample, amplitude say two, and I'm going to sleep for half a second between each one. Now we've got the drum kick drum playing at the same time as our guitars, and you can have as many of these live loops playing at the same time as you want. The important thing is that you need to have different names, otherwise it really gets confused, and you always pick the last one and the first one uh, it doesn't get remembered. Um, and so with this approach now, you can start to Comment the code out, move the drum, bring it back in again. Yep. And as we've seen before, we can switch our samples live, go back to our drums, switch it back to the loop arm end drum. Well, again, we can start to perform like this. So this is the, the basic way to get started playing music with Sonic Pi, is to use the play command. So I'm going to play notes is to change the release time to how long it lasts for, to make it longer or shorter. It's to change the synthesizer with use underscore synth and to choose one of these different sounds. Let's choose chip lead this time. Yep. And then we can play samples. If you can spell it correctly. <laughs> and you can choose any one of the built-in samples, but you can also bring your own. You just need to drag that from, uh, from a a folder across into Sonic Pi, it'll, it'll expand into the, the name of that, that sample. I'll show you that another time. Um, and so we can choose any of these samples. We can work through them all and, and see which one we like. Here's a cowbell sound. And then we can then use our live loops to repeat patterns which are either including plays and sleeps, or samples and sleeps, or plays and samples and sleeps. You can mix all these and combine them in many different ways. And then once you get started and you really want to explore and, and, and play around, then you really, once you read the tutorial, you'll start to recognize that you can do a few really very powerful things. So uh, two things I'm going to do in the performance I'm going to do in, in a moment is to use external synthesizers. And in this case here I've got, uh, you can't see it in front of me, uh, I'll try to lift it up a bit. I have a synthesizer here, which is an analog synthesizer, which has a whole bunch of controls I can play with. Uh, which I can then trigger from the code uh, and then play it back uh, into Sonic Pi as well. I can plug guitars into Sonic Pi and add reverb and distortion and echo effects live whilst the guitarist is playing. Or I can plug any sound source. I can plug a microphone in uh, and have a singer or a rapper. Or I can plug in electric violin or I can plug all at the same time and control them all at the same time from code. So uh, a really fun thing to do is to have one person who's coding, say, beats and uh, bass riffs, and another person who's then playing a guitar, 
another person singing on top and you can make a whole band and power it with code and that's that's a lot of fun to play with and experiment and i've been to a bunch of schools where they've actually had bands where they've had the code be the thing the glue which is combining all the instruments together and that's a really lovely thing to see okay so enough talking uh Remember that you can download the Sonic Pi from the website, you can join the community, you can read the tutorial, and everything I'm showing you, uh, everything that I've designed in the system, I've made sure that a 10-year-old child uh, can understand it with enough patience and, and, and thought. And so I've really tried my best to make this as simple as possible. So if you're worried that code is a bit complicated for you, please, please, please bear in mind there's a big difference between what is hard and complicated and what is unknown. And sometimes you might confuse the two. You might think, ah, this thing I don't know anything about yet must be hard, and that's not always the case. And in this case, I'm really promising to you that this isn't hard, it's just different. And if you spend a bit of time just figuring it out, uh, I'm sure you'll get it. And the same way that cooking a lasagna might seem really complicated when you first try it, but after you've cooked a few lasagnas, it starts to make a lot more sense and you, you don't burn them as badly or you don't overcook the aubergines or whatever. So that's the same way with this. Once you've experimented and played with it for a while, things start to click and it makes much more sense and you can start to have a lot more fun. So let me now switch uh, over uh, to a different view. Let me go to the dark mode. There we go. And um, I'm going to now switch over to, to this view where I'm going to now switch over the lights into dark mode and I'm going to uh, flip across here like this and I'm going to turn off the screen and put some visualizers on. So this is another fun thing to do is to, is to play around with this kind of approach and to, to, to mix and match the, the visuals that you can put on from, from, from videos or from website uh, images and, and there's, there's really cool websites that have some really cool visuals uh, with the code itself. Um, so here we go. to now there we are. I'm going to try these different kinds of things so we can show you um, and so here is the code in the background so now I'm going to uh, get started so I'm going to uh, I'm going to start talk stop talking very shortly as I move into the performance but let me just just get started and show you what's going on so I'm going to create a live loop let's call it uh, Atmos and here I'm going to do a sample I'm going to use a function I've written before which just returns me one of the samples I've downloaded. So I've downloaded some really nice sounds that I like, um, and you can do the same, but choose the sounds that you like. Uh, and so, actually, no, I'm not gonna do that one. I'm gonna do Bass Atmos. I'm gonna choose a second sample in that sample pack. I'm gonna sleep for eight seconds. There we go. And then I'm going to do Amplitude 2, and Amplitude 4, now it's spinning round every eight seconds and playing that sample. And then I'm going to bring in a drum beat. So let's go for Funkum Beats 3. I'm going to beat stretch that over 16 beats. I'm going to play that with a low pass filter. Make it sound muffled to start off with.
can create precisely the same programs we're creating right now with these tools of complexity with dramatically, drastically simpler tools. Right? I did C++ for a long time. I did Java. I did C Sharp. I know how to make big systems in those languages. And I completely believe you do not need all that complexity.